Making videos for YouTube has been my full-time job for almost two years, and in that time, I've learned a lot. I often get asked what kit I use and about my video making process. So in this video, I'm gonna share my seven step process for making my videos from start to end. Any questions you have along the way, put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Any idea I get, I write it down. And I've got so many ideas that even if I made a video every single week for the rest of my life, I'd probably still never run out. I get my ideas from reading and watching videos. I'll see someone do something and I think, I really wanna do that. So I'll look into it and see if I can make it happen. I'll store all of my ideas in a spreadsheet and I use Apple Numbers, which is the same as Excel. And I've got a few tabs in there. I've got yearly planners, then a couple of mega sheets where I'll write all of my ideas. And having a format like this means that I can see everything that I've got planned. And it also means that I can move stuff around easily. This yearly planner always changes. Sometimes I'll stop feeling excited about a video, so I'll take it out. But most of the time it changes because I'm behind schedule. And that's because if there's one thing that I've learned is that making videos takes a really long time. Alongside the spreadsheet, next to my desk, I've got this whiteboard, and this has got all of the videos that are coming up. And this reminds me of what's happening, and I can also ponder on ideas. And this board changes frequently too. There'll be an idea on there for weeks, and then one day I'll just decide that I don't wanna do it anymore. And I base all of my ideas and my video creating process on intuition, and that brings me to morning pages. Strictly speaking, morning pages is part of a morning routine. It's handwritten freestyle writing done each morning. Writing that comes from the brain, through the pen and straight onto the page. And morning pages is a vital part of my video making process. Most of what I write about in my morning pages is about videos. Basically, that's because it's the thing that I think about the most. If I can't work something out, whether to make a video or what order to release videos in, the pages always have the answers. So often the idea will start in morning pages, then it goes on the spreadsheet, and if it's something good and that I wanna make it soon, it will go on the whiteboard. The next two steps are filming and script writing, and depending on what style of video I'm making will depend on what I do first. Mostly I do the filming first because the videos I make are over a longer period of time, like a week or a month. So with that in mind, let's talk about filming next and let's start with what kit I use. For the last two years, I've used the Sony ZV-1, which is a great camera. It costs around five to 600 pound, and almost all the videos you see on this channel are recorded on this, including this video. It's compact, which means I can throw it in my bag. It's got decent audio without using a microphone, and it's got a fantastic feature called defocus, which when I press one button, it just puts the background into, makes it all blurry and look all fancy. Almost all the time, I use the camera in automatic mode, and if I was to buy another camera, I would buy another one of these. I do have a second camera, it's a Sony AX53, and I bought it because I wanted the night vision. I spent 700 pounds on that camera for one video, and that video didn't even make 700 pounds, but now at least I've got it, and it has come in handy as a second camera. I've also got a GoPro for when I do activities and I need something waterproof and I've got a drone, a 360 camera, and all sorts of other bits, but I don't really use them. I bought them thinking that it would add to my videos, but the reality is the more cameras I use, the more complicated it gets. I do use my phone occasionally to film when I'm out and about, but I prefer to use a camera with a dedicated memory card, because otherwise footage that's on my phone just ends up mixed up with pictures of Charlie and days out, and then it's just, it just all gets a bit complicated. Moving on to microphones, I've got three. The first one that I bought is the Rode Video Micro, which is a small directional mic, and the Dead Cat is a great addition for filming outside to stop the sound of the wind. And this mic is pretty cheap and really reliable, and I use it for a lot of my vlog style videos. And then for video clips like this, when I'm sitting talking to camera, I use the Rode Wireless Go with a separate Rode lavalier mic. And this setup is simple and the quality is great. And just recently I bought the DJR mic set because I wanted to be able to put microphones on two people, the person who I'm working with and myself. For tripods, I used a 10 pound one from Amazon for years and it was okay, it was a bit rubbish, but it worked. And when I had enough money, I upgraded to the Joby RangePod, which I love. It's compact, sturdy and moves around great. 
I've also got this Joby Telepod Mobile for when I'm on the go, and I love this. I added a Joby ball head 1K to the top to make it a bit easier to use. And I realise this is quite a bit of stuff, but I've been collecting it over the years and working it all out to what suits me. But if I was to start again with a basic kit, I'd go for the Sony SV-1, the Amazon tripod and the Rode Video Micro microphone. And if the camera was too much money, I'd just go with an iPhone. I use SanDisk Extreme Pro memory cards because they're reliable and I store each project in these plastic bags with a label on inside a lunchbox lid. It's a crude system, but it works for me. And then, hold on. I've got these two studio lights and I used to use them, but I don't use them anymore because putting them up, it, I just can't be bothered. And they only probably take about two or three minutes to put up, but they just drive me mad. Put the lights on in the room and I'll just face the window. So at this stage, I wanna let you know that I've watched a ton of videos about backdrops and microphones and then using a key light to light this and then a something else light to do that. And it just all confused me. And ultimately it stopped me making videos because I just felt so overwhelmed. Lighting, audio and the background is important, but for me, it's just about making the video, doing the best I can with what I've got and also with my skill set. When it comes to some of my longer videos, like when I'm learning a skill or doing a 30 day challenge, I end up with so much footage and it takes hours to get through. I'll talk about that in the editing section. I like to script my videos because otherwise I just end up talking forever and not getting to the point. And writing isn't a natural skill for me, so the script writing takes ages. Once I've decided on a video, I create an Apple note, which means I can throw down thoughts as they happen. I also have a dictaphone that I take running as that's when I get my best ideas. When I get home, I transfer the audio into the notes and the notes have absolutely no structure. It's just this big jumble of words and I'll have to organize it later. When it comes to writing the script, I begin with a basic template and I use Apple Pages, which is the same as Microsoft Word. I'll start with an intro, then the main structure and an outro and I just start typing. And getting started is the hardest part for me and I put it off for ages, but I just start with my what and my why and then I just see what comes out of my fingers. The first version of the script is pretty terrible and it takes about three days to get organized. The first day is throwing down the basic structure. The second day is refining it and adding the notes along with some additional research. And then the third day is when I do some tweaks and I read it out loud just to make sure that it all makes sense. If I can write a script in three days, then that's a great week. But there are some videos, for example, my fitness testing video, and it took me nearly two weeks to write just because I just couldn't find the right words and I just couldn't make it flow. And it's really easy for me to get frustrated. But another thing that I've learned is that it will take as long as it takes. The main thing is, is that I get it right and that I'm happy with the final result. I've watched plenty of other YouTubers talk about their workflow and it was reassuring to me to hear that their script writing process can take just as long because before that, I thought it was just me and my incapabilities. Nathaniel Drew, for example, takes several days scripting for a video. And I spent days working on this and writing it all out. That clip was from a recent class that I did on Skillshare. And honestly, Skillshare is the one place that I've learned the most about making YouTube videos. And this video is sponsored by Skillshare. I've done about 10 classes on Skillshare from creators like Marcus Brownlee, Lily Singh, and Sorrel Moore to help me learn about making videos. One class which I loved was How to Speak Confidently on Camera, a guide for content creators by Nathaniel Drew. The hour long class shared his process for making videos and some of the struggles he faces and how he overcomes them, which I found so helpful. Skillshare has so many career based classes. So if you're wanting to learn something new, then you can get one month free by using the link in the description. And that link is valid for the first 1000 people. Once I've got my script, I print it out and I use a highlighter for the bits that are the voiceover. And then I stick it to my tripod. It's a very rudimentary system. And I don't use a teleprompter just because it means more kit and more complication. And I just prefer to have my script there as a guideline and then I can just kind of freestyle around it. For editing, I use a MacBook Pro 13 inch laptop and Final Cut Pro. 
I chose Final Cut Pro because I used to use iMovie and the two are quite similar. And I did try using Adobe Premiere for about half a day once. I actually thought my brain was gonna fall out. I edit from a one terabyte SSD, which means that I can keep storage free on my laptop. And also it's much quicker. To start a project, I drop all the files in the timeline. Then I go through and look for all the relevant parts and delete the rest. And this process can take hours depending on how much footage I've got. Then I drop the voiceover in and add the necessary clips over the top. When starting a project, I've often got a vision or an idea of how I want it to look in my head. Sometimes it goes that way and other times it doesn't. But what I've come to learn is that by just getting started and just starting that editing process, it always works itself out in the end. Before I move into music, stock and some other bits, I want to share my file organisation and my backup system. And I wish I'd learnt these two things when I first started because it took me ages to work out and I would have saved so much time and energy. I use a five terabyte hard drive to store all my files on. For file organisation, I think I got this from Peter McKinnon. I've got folders with years and then inside those I've got monthly folders. Inside each of those, I create a project with the date. So I start with the year, the month, then the day, because that keeps it in chronological order, followed by the project title. Then in there, I have the individual cameras used for that project, along with the media, stock, music, and sound effects. And using that system means that I can easily find what I want when I need it. For backing up my footage, each hard drive has a matching backup. Left is my main one, and right is my backup. Don't ask me why I named them those. Maybe I saw it in a video once. To copy the files one from the other, left to right, I use a piece of software called ChronoSync. It makes a copy from one to the other. It syncs each drive to match the other one in just one click. It's really good. So that means now I've got two backups, and these are two physical backups, which makes me a bit nervous. So I also back it up to the cloud. So I use ChronoSync to back up to something called Backblaze. And I can't really remember why I chose Backblaze, probably because I can store loads of stuff up there for a pretty reasonable price. And this backup system, it's not really necessary when first starting out, but it is something to think about when you get more footage. And I realize some of this stuff is quite in depth. So at some point in the future, I'd like to make some separate videos giving more details. Maybe I'll put it on my Extra Bitch channel or turn it into a Skillshare class because these are the kind of videos that I wish were around when I first started. For music and sound effects, I use Epidemic Sound because I saw some of my favorite YouTubers recommend them. And it's great, I love their music. For stock footage, I use Storyblocks, although I try to use as much as my own footage as possible as I think it's more personable. Up to this point, a video edit will take me between five and 10 working days, so around one to two weeks. And I'm lucky if I can make a video in five days because that's not very often. And some videos have taken me weeks, some of them even months. My Atlantic Row video, for example, took four years for me to muster the courage to edit it. Another example is me going on a desert island trip 13 months ago and I still haven't edited that video because I've got over one terabyte of footage from seven cameras. And quite frankly, I'm terrified. I'll do it at some point though. It just needs to be the right time. If you make YouTube videos, then I'd love to hear your process. Please write it in the comments box because I know there'll be some other people that will be really interested to read it, especially if it's different from mine. Once a video has been finished, it feels like such a relief but there's still quite a lot of work to do. I'll send a low resolution version to my dad for constructive criticism, and he's great at giving feedback if something doesn't make sense. I'll also show my mum, and she's a great indicator if something needs cutting out because she gets distracted. Once the video's done, I'll export it, save it, and then create a compressed version using Compressor for Mac. This costs $50 and is a one-time purchase, and it's great because it makes uploading to YouTube much quicker. And then I haven't talked about thumbnails yet. And the reason I haven't talked about thumbnails is because it's my least favorite part of making YouTube videos. I should make them whilst I'm doing my filming, but I've just got too much else to think about. I'm not the best person to get advice from. I get some pictures, I have a few options, I put it into Canva, I do the best I can with what I've got, and then, and then I've just got a basic thumbnail. And as the video uploads, I'll add a title, thumbnail and description, 
Then as soon as it's live, I watch the video straight away to make sure it's okay. And then I share the video link on all my socials, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and I put it on my website. And then the cycle starts again.